Hello and welcome to my channel. So many of you have been asking for an ink tutorial, so I'm doing a bunch of ink tutorials for you, starting with this very simple and fun bird lesson. And I'm going to introduce you to three basic ink techniques in this video. You can use them to get the same kind of look that you see here. Next week, I'll be back with a more complex ink cat video. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you find out exactly when I post it. In terms of the supplies, which I've listed in the video description below, you will need uh, black ink, and I'm using Winsor Newton India ink, and another color ink, or you can use your favorite watercolor here. We'll need a palette just to make a lighter mixture of our black and uh, pink ink, and um, you also need two or three pointed round brushes from big to small, and I'm using Escoda synthetic brushes from the Red Travel set. If you want to see a detailed review of this set, I'll link the card above and also leave a link to the video uh, below in the description. You need a pencil and also a piece of tissue just to um, uh, clean your brushes. We'll need at least two jars of clear water because um, you'll want to use the first jar to clean the brush from ink and it will really muddy up the water and the second jar to make sure that the brush is really clean. You will also need watercolor paper and preferably 100% cotton, uh, at least 140 pounds. If you want, you can also use mixed media paper, but the ink blends will be much more difficult and less expressed if you use that type of paper. So it really depends on uh, what kind of effect you're going after, but don't limit yourself. Um, use whatever you have on hand. It's just that uh, the blending will be uh, quite more pronounced with um, real watercolor paper. So let's review the strokes we're going to use to paint our bird. First one is really basic black line and we will primarily use ink straight from a bottle. So this will help us outline our key shapes like the body um, and uh, maybe the neck of the bird. You can also use the pressure of the brush to add some visual interest to your line. Uh, the second one is the blend, and there are two variations of it. Um, this one is much more unpredictable, and the blend is not an official name or anything, I just that's just what I call it. You could call it whatever you want. Um, so the way we do it is first put down some clear water and the area where you want your ink to spread to. And then put a tiny bit of ink straight from the bottle and watch it spread. So you can have some real fun with this and with practice you'll be able to really create wonderful transitions like you see me doing here on the cat's tail. Um, but this can also be a bit stressful because um, when you have a large wet area to cover and you want some control, um, you have to practice quite a bit. But it's also a lot of fun and on the small bird we're only going to use one little area around the tail so there's less chance for us to get it wrong. And another variation of this is a reverse blend, and it's basically um, exactly what it means. It's in reverse. You start by doing an ink stroke with uh, most of the time ink directly from a bottle, so it's very saturated. And then use a bunch of clear water to direct your ink where you want it to go. So this really works well for fur and feathers. And the third stroke we're going to use is what I call a brush shape. Um, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, we will take advantage of the round pointed shape of our brush to create these organic looking strokes from the thin point to a more wide body. And then you can press the brush at the end to end the stroke abruptly or drag the brush out to have a more pointed leafy look. And of course you can add some variation by using more diluted ink so your strokes are more faint and uh, this will be important when we paint our bamboo leaves. So let's jump right into it and we're going to paint from the beak down to the legs. So first I'm going to wet the areas of the beak and the neck that I want to have a bit of color transition. Just a little bit though, not too much water. And then I'll go in with the tip of my brush from the top. Um, so there's a little bit of uh, that reverse blend effect here. I will continue with wet ink on dry paper, just doing my lines outlining the body of the bird. 
and now it's time to do the tail and uh, this will be a straightforward blend so grab a clean brush and put down some water on the area of the body where you want the tail feathers to connect and uh, I'll test how my blend will work just by doing a very light diluted ink outline around the edge of my water just to see how much ink is spreading before I go in with uh, saturated pure inky feathers Okay, now I'm happy with the way it's blending, so I'll grab my inky brush and start doing tail strokes, ending them right around the area where the wet um, area starts, so where the water starts. And I'm using I diluted ink straight from the bottle, starting with the tip of my brush and dragging it all the way to the center of the bird, pressing it very gently and watching the ink spread. And I'll do it a few times. Not every stroke has to be saturated ink. You can add some lighter strokes just for visual interest. And we have a nice bushy tail. I'll let it dry and um, while it's drying I'll add a few details. Maybe on the beak, paint the eye, Maybe add another reverse blend on the neck because I want it to be more pronounced. Paint the legs, very loose lines, just indicating the angle of the leg. No need to get too detailed here. We're not going for a realistic look. And now that I see how my ink is drying, I can go back and fix some of the edges. So we want our blends to end seamlessly. Um, and where I see a little bit of gray edge, I will just blend them down with clear water. So it's more of a smooth blend from black all the way to white. So this part is almost finished. We're going to let it dry. Time to do our bamboo. And uh, grab your medium round brush and a little bit of uh, color, maybe pink. I'm using Windsor Newton pink ink, uh, but you can use any color you like and I will make a little mixture with water just to give me some options in terms of how saturated my strokes will be and paint the stems first very loose just a few sections adding a bit of my diluted ink just for visual interest and then a few branches no need to worry about the exact stroke placement but you can add a few pencil outlines to help you locate those branches if you want before you start painting so now let's add a few bamboo leaves and uh, this is just a straightforward stroke using the full shape of your brush from the tip all the way to the base of the leaf. The trick I use here to create a sense of depth is um, the first set of leaves I'm going to paint will be very saturated and I'm using ink directly from the bottle um, or just slightly diluted and these will be my front leaves, the ones that are closer to us visually. And then I'm going to use a more diluted ink mixture to add a few lighter leaves. And uh, those will appear to be further away visually, creating a nice variation. So it's more interesting for human eye to look at it. And it creates a sense of realism, but not too much. So the overall painting still has that decorative look. And a few finishing touches. I'm going to add just a bit of uh, pink color on the bird's head, making sure it blends nicely all the way to white and uh, also just a drop of pink at the base of the tail, just like this. And um, what you want to do is uh, come back and just take a look at the overall painting and see if there's uh, any opportunity to add a few details without overpainting it and uh, what I'm gonna do is just uh, paint a few more very faint pink leaves in the background sign my name and that's it our crane is finished let me know if you tried this at home I love seeing your work on Instagram when you tag me and uh, let me know how you like the ink experience have a wonderful week and I'll see you guys soon